Mahalaga ang infrastructure development sa bawat bansa para matiyak ang paglago ng ekonomiya at masolusyonan ang kahirapan. Sa Sri Lanka man, Indonesia o sa Pilipinas, pareho ang inaasam. Ang magkaroon ng episyenteng infrastruktura para guminhawa ang buhay. Iba-iba lamang ang pamamaraan para matamu ito. Para kay Architect Einsiedel, bagamat mabilis ang pagpapatupad ng mga infrastructure projects sa ilalim ng Administrasyong Duterte, mainam na isaalang-alang ang mass housing para sa mga mamamayan. Ang isang dapat na siguraduhin lamang ng gobyerno, yung lugar ng mga stasyon, merong pabahay para sa mahihirap. Ang nagiging problema kasi, pareho ng MRT3. Sa EDSA, makikita mo kung saan may stasyon, anong nasa tabi. Puro mall at kondominium na mamahalin. Saan titira yung mga janitor, mga waiter, waitress, sekretarya, messenger boy, yung mga hindi nakaka-afford ng mga ganun. Tapos sasabihin, hindi, mayroong project ang NHA sa General Trias o sa... Uh, yung, iba, yung, yung mga malalayong lugar, nasa Norsagaray na yung iba, nasa Pandi yung iba. Bakit hindi mailagay doon sa tabi kung saan mayroong stasyon? Habang hindi pa binibili lahat yan ng mga real estate developers. Para naman kay Professor Kasiple, mahalaga para sa pamahalaan na mag-isip ng long-term solutions sa mga problemang kinakaharap. Nang sa gayon ay magtagumpay ang infrastructure development program nito. You ensure na may strong political parties na gumagawa ng political decision, including programs of government. Kasi ngayon, ano tayo eh? Political dynasty, families, clan. Paano mag-isip ang mga ito? Eh di simple parokyal. Wala, walang long-term na pag-iisip. Kaya mga problema like poverty, paulit-ulit yan, climate change, hindi kaya natin harapin yan. Kasi ang mga solusyon dyan, long-term, they will be pati infrastructure, long-term ng mga project dyan. And you cannot do anything about it unless you change the political system. Naniniwala naman ang Sri Lankan Central Bank Governor na maiging samantalahin ang bentahan ng bawat bansa. We are smack bang in the middle of China's maritime circuit in the, in the One Belt, One Road initiative. If you look at the maritime route, we are right in the middle of it. Um, we have access to ASEAN, we have access to the Middle East, East Africa, and we are kind of equidistant in terms of time zone between Europe and the Far East. So these are all tremendous advantages, and we have excellent international relations with all countries. Uh, and recently, um, Sri Lanka has attracted the attention of the major powers because of the, the, the geopolitics of the Indian Ocean region. So all that, we have to be very clever. You know, I think the term is box clever. We need to box, box clever to take advantage of these advantages we have in relation to our location and in relation to our international relations. Ayon kay Secretary Y. De Ratna ng Sri Lanka, may pamantayan ang efficienting public transportation. Uh, I think we are very much relying on public transportation system and we want uh, the uh, uh, people to attract from uh, the private vehicles into uh, uh, the uh, public transportation, uh, which symbolizes in uh, uh, the, the mayor of Bogota once had said, uh, the developed country is not a country where uh, poor people travel in uh, private vehicles, but developed countries somewhere the rich people travel in public transportation. Ang Indonesia naman ay may sariling pananaw sa pagsisikap nito na matamo ang progreso sa infrastruktura. So economically, so we are more advantages working with the China rather than U.S. So this is lesson learned from everybody. So what is the future? I think the ASEAN uh, development, people may say that 21st century, the Asian age, which is probably led by the Chinese. The Chinese have uh, quiet technology, they have financial power, they have technology, 
So, and they are quite friendly to cooperate with us and welcoming to us. And, and, and in this case, the transparency and open up and talk with each other is very important. I think the future of ASEAN and China is going to be binding, going to be uh, the, the power of economic strength in the future. I hope that we would continue to provide uh, the right kind of environment uh, that uh, would uh, basically be a beacon of uh, success, island of integrity in, in the whole of ASEAN and the engine for growth. Um, this is a big country, 270 million people. Uh, it's growing at around 5%. We're capable of growing 6, 6.5% if we put together the right policy. I'm proposing a big push strategy in terms of food, energy, and water uh, uh, issues that uh, are going to be uh, major issues going forward. So yeah, I think Indonesia, along with uh, other ASEAN countries, the Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, could, uh, could be, including Vietnam, could be uh, somewhere people look to, uh, to invest and see where democracy, prosperity, uh, equality, justice can, can take place at the same time. Maraming pagkakahalin tulad ng Pilipinas, Sri Lanka at Indonesia. Marami ding matututunan ng isa't isa sa mga naging karanasan ng bawat bansa. Pero sinasabi ng mga eksperto na walang shortcut sa mabilis na paglago ng ekonomiya at wala rin maipapalit na infrastructure development para matamo ang pag-unlad ng bansa. Sinisikap ng pamahalaan na agarang mapaganda ang sistema ng transportasyon sa bansa sa ilalim ng Build, Build, Build program ni Pangulong Duterte. Mahalagang magkaroon ng maayos at episyente pagpapatupad ng mga proyekto. Malinaw at mabisang polisiya para sa pribadong partisipasyon at tamang paggubol sa pondo ng walang korupsyon. Nang sa gayon ay tunay na guminhawa ang paglalakbay sa bansa at may pagmamalaki sa buong mundo ang mapitagang infrastructure development sa Pilipinas. Magandang gabi. Ako po si Veronica Baluy Jimenez at ito ang istoryang aking naitala sa Veronica Files.